Welcome to Message TV and welcome to the very first in the series of From the Vault. My name is Emma Owen, I'm going to be your host for this series and I joined the Message Trust way back in 1997 with my husband Tim Owen when we became members of the Worldwide Message Tribe. I now have a focus on a project called Respect Me. I head it up, we have schools teams that go into schools across the nation and across the world with a gospel-centred PSHE focus. What is from the vault. Well, let me unpack. We want to bring to you some of the greatest teaching from out of the message over the last three decades. We're going to be sharing some of our favorite music, spoken words and testimonies. It's going to be so much fun. We're also going to have a little focus on what the higher tour is. You see, way back in the day when the Message Trust first started, we had a vision to give repeated opportunities to every young person for them to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And we've seen tens of thousands respond to this amazing message of hope and love. So what is the higher tour? Well, it started back in 2015, where we started sending all our bands to a, one particular region to focus for about two or three weeks on the schools in that area. Every band would go into a different school every day, performing in assemblies, taking lessons, doing lunchtime concerts. And at the end of that period of time, we'd all congregate under one roof with a gospel-centered party. Oh yeah, it was so much fun. And loads of people have responded to this amazing message of hope and love through Jesus. Christ. Every time a young person says they want to become a Christian and put Jesus in the driving seat, we give them a little goodie bag and we direct them to their local church where they can be discipled to actually investigate this Christian faith, but actually own their own faith for themselves. So sadly, we can't be in schools at the moment, but why don't we celebrate the journey of all those people who have become Christians over the years through the higher tour? Let's have a look at some of the highlights. part of the higher tour and moves some of our other friends who are in different bands with different music all of us are going across the orchard for four weeks we believe there is a place where you can find meaning there is a place you can find purpose there is a place where you can know your identity and feel loved you make so much more you are world changers you are history makers that's who you are you can wake up every day and you don't have to question the reason for your existence. You can wake up knowing that you're not a mistake or an accident, but knowing that you were created to live for something higher. for your life if you invite him into your life. And if that's what you want, I want you to stand up right now across the room. You're with me all the way, like a cloud by day, like a fire by night. You're with me all the way, you're with me all the way. No 
2017 message conference, we heard from Beth Redman. Now, Beth Redman was actually one of the earliest members of the Worldwide Message Tribe. She has got an amazing voice. And her and her husband, Matt, have been great friends of the Message Trust ever since. You see, Beth saw right at the beginning the impact that the Message Trust had on the young lives of the young people here in Manchester. And Beth and her husband, Matt, share in the same vision to reach the nations with this amazing gospel of Jesus Christ. In this talk, Beth actually tells us to be expectant about our future, that actually God has got more than we can ever dream or imagine. You see, we've seen nothing yet. Check this out. Well, it is fantastic to be here. I lived in Manchester in 1995 for two years and had the most life-changing time. I gave my life to God when I was 18. I was brought up going to church and I was brought up um, in a really rough area and a council estate and right in the middle was this church and I would go every Sunday and God is so faithful that whatever desert you've been brought up in he will always provide a river and that local church was the river for me and I was a young girl crippled by insecurity and rejection and all of the difficulties that I'd experienced in my life on that estate um, and yet when I said yes to Jesus I knew that I had to get over myself and I knew that it didn't matter what I didn't think about myself, it mattered what Jesus said about me. And because of that, I was compelled to tell people about Jesus. And so I kind of arrived in 1995 with this massive heart for Jesus, and yet I couldn't speak. And any time I would speak, I'd be just riddled with, you know, embarrassment. I had a bright red face. And Andy taught me not only how to boldly proclaim my faith, but he has been such a hero of the faith to me from then until now for so many of us. And I'm so grateful to him. And through those time, those years at the message, you know, I don't want to go on and on about that because that's the old wine. That's what Jesus did then. And we want to get excited and say yes to the things he's going to do now and in these days that are to come. But in those years, we saw miracles. We saw absolutely closed hearts, wretched stories, so much anger and bitterness and atheism and brokenness. And we'd go into these environments and all we we had was the gospel and the gospel was enough to break the hardest of heart and soften the, the, the most closed door and to open up people who'd always said no but for some reason on that day it was their yes and I was so privileged to be a part of it even though I barely knew how to stand up and say anything this amazing legend of the faith taught me. So I have so much respect and love and joy and excitement watching what God has done. But I'm even more excited and joyful and expectant that we're all gathered here in this unbelievable atmosphere of faith. You can feel it when you walk in the room, okay? I've been doing some things with my husband this week and we've been doing some events and different things. I'll be honest with you, we always wanna build up, we wanna speak where there's life, we don't wanna pull things down or pull people down or create divisions or be negative. But sometimes you can walk in a room and you can feel an atmosphere and it grieves you. And you think, we haven't come all this way to do Christian karaoke. We haven't come all this way to sing along together. We've come. Because God, before the beginning of time, ordained that you would live right now in this time, in this city, in this street, in this housing estate with your neighbours. And you're enough. And you might look and you think, well, but I can't speak. You know, I can't do this. What He has given you is enough. What He has given you when you put the fire of God on it and when you have faith, God will move the mountains and you just get to be the vessel. And that is what I love about my experience at the message. It has anchored me. And Matt is like, can you just tell a new story? And I'm like, I can't. Because I saw something that was the real deal. I saw people who were just vessels, no ego. People who had had a revelation of Jesus. And all they wanted to do 
was be that vessel in what, whether it's Andy rapping and making those noises that he used to make or me singing, doing my very best and Andy would make me have my hair blonde and make me wear this. He couldn't quite make me be the thing that he envisaged. But you just got to bring the thing that you can bring and trust the God to send the fire and for there to be an atmosphere of faith. And God will finish the work in this city that He has started. And one thing I want to say to you is you have not peaked. You have not seen anything yet. And we can tell the stories and we can go, this one guy and his mate and his mate and these few 18-year-old girls and that's where it started. And then Andy's got an OBE and we've got this office and we've got this band. But you've seen nothing yet. You've not even seen anything yet. God has got so much more and He can do it because there is an atmosphere of faith in this place and people willing to say, here am I, send me and wait for the fire to fall. And I wanna just really briefly share from Hebrews 12. I haven't got much to say, And I want to say it quickly and then I want us to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us again to go out and do great works in this city. Amen. And I love the book of Hebrews. It is actually written for a people group who were going through extreme difficulty. You know, so many things against them, so many people against them, so much confusion and division and so many things that were greater than them. And we have this book in our hands to encourage us that in extreme opposition or extreme difficulty, God has got a message for us so that we can be called to finish the things that God has started and that we can keep going when we wanna give up. And Hebrews 12, one to three says this. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this, this is like the best bit. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting Him, He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now He is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all He endured so that you won't become weary and give up. And I love that the Apostle, he he writes this, this chapter 12 and he starts off with those important beginning words, therefore. And so what he's saying essentially is, we can't really take hold of everything that I wanna fill you up with in Hebrews 12 unless you can actually take a firm grip on everything I've just said in Hebrews 11. So therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, he's, he's pointing back to Hebrews 11. He's saying to really understand what I'm saying, you've got to keep a firm grip on both of these chapters at the same time. And the backstory to that, Hebrews 11, is this long list of ordinary vessels These people that God called who ran their race, ordinary men and women who said yes to God, and not just yes, but in order to take hold of the promise, and some of them never even got to see the promise, but to lay the foundation for the promise to be received, Okay, therefore we look at their lives and we go through the list of people and the list of miracles and the list of impossibles and we we keep a firm grip on that. And then we look forward to Hebrews 12 and we say, therefore, those great heroes of the faith, like Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and all the prophets, Rahab, Abraham, Isaac, 
We look at the impossible things that God was able to achieve through those vessels. And we imagine this picture of a stadium of heroes of the faith who actually are just these ordinary men and women who said yes to God and let the fire fall on them and endured everything they need to endure so that they could set a foundation for the promise. And we imagine that it's like a stadium. And so right now, wherever we are in the city, wherever we're placed right now, it's like this unbelievable amphitheater stadium of thousands of these men and women of the faith, like a cloud. I mean, if you ever look at a cloud, you can't can't put a number on the vapors. It's this immense thing that's surrounding your life and your vision and your yes to Jesus and your gift and your wineskin and your vessel. And it's surrounding your life, saying, look what God was able to do through my yes. Look what God was able to do through my faith. And it's by holding on to that faith that hope against hope, that that closed womb, that that puny man, that person who said I'm the weakest and the least and the smallest and the less able. Hold on in faith to what God can do through them because He wants to do that through you. And it's like they're cheering you on. And earlier this year, I got to see two football games and I feel like everyone's gonna be fine with me because I, it was Manchester United, which I know may hurt some people, Manchester United versus LA Galaxy, and Man City versus Real Madrid. So look, everyone likes me, I'm on everyone's team. I was cheering for all of Manchester. And we went to this first game and there's like five, I don't know, 5,000 people and people were like super pumped and it was amazing. And then we went to see Man City, and how many people, was it 70,000? A hundred, I didn't exaggerate, this is amazing. A hundred thousand people, okay? And Man City were the underdogs, but around that room, around that, a hundred thousand fans, all you could really see were Man City t-shirts. And before anything had happened, they were up, they were cheering, they were shouting, they were extolling, they were affirming, they were believing in the underdogs. They were setting up the atmosphere. And you know what, they won 4-0. Go City. And so the apostle was saying, that's what it's like for you in the lane that our God in heaven before the beginning of time drew for you. How could you write yourself off? How could you write your life off and limit yourself by your own ability and your own gifting when our God, before the beginning of time, He set a line and a course and a race and He knew the beginning and the middle and the end of your life and He's planned in love and with power to set you on that race and use you in this city, in this organisation as a vessel to bring glory and salvation and change. Does that not blow your mind? And it blows my mind because I've been that person in my lane, thinking, how could God possibly use me? And then all you have to do is do what it says and it works. And it's so simple. And if we want to finish what we've started and we want to keep going and not when we feel like giving up, we have to live these scriptures, remembering that you don't run alone, that you run with a team of fans, like a cloud of witnesses, believing God's best for you, knowing that He has ordained you, not by accident, but on purpose, intentionally using you like vessels, like jars of clay. That's all Andy is. I have so much respect for this man. I can't tell you. I've been under his leadership, so I can tell you. You know, you could look at things from afar and you can think you know, but when you've been in them, you can say with authority, this man has more integrity than I can possibly explain. He is the real deal. But at the end of the day, he's just a man who said yes to Jesus. He's a beautiful vessel who has been able to surround himself with an atmosphere of faith. And look what God can do. And so it says this, therefore, since you have this crowd of witnesses who managed to do the impossible, 
here's what you need to do to finish your race. You've got to strip off every weight that slows us down and the sin that so easily entangles. You know, I could rock up to the message in 1995 with my baggage and say, Andy, I'm here to change the world for Jesus. It's, you know, awesome, great heart, but that's not gonna do much because you're gonna end up tripping yourself up. So we don't wanna minimize or deny our weaknesses or put aside the things that we wanna keep separate. Is it, no, I don't wanna live my life with my weaknesses disabling me. There are 40% of people worldwide who suffer from anxiety. There's three million people who actually can't live their lives because they're so shrunk and disabled by anxiety. And I was one of those people. And I wanna do these things for Jesus, but yeah, I have this anxiety. So you can't do it. So what I have to do is present myself to God as a living sacrifice, you and I, and say, what are the hindrances? What are the weaknesses? Where are my weak spots? And I've got to do everything in my power to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling and say, don't let me get tripped up by anxiety. Don't let me get tripped up by fear of man. Don't let me get tripped up by not believing that God can do the impossible. Don't let me get tripped up because I've got a race to begin and it's got a beginning and a mission and an end and I want to get to the end, amen? I don't want to shrink and fold and say, well, I, I can't do that, Andy, or no, God, please, I don't want to speak. You know, Moses tried that. It doesn't work. He's got a plan for your life. Some of you, you're saying no. You need to say yes to God today. Yes to anything that He has for you because it's not about the vessel. It's about what the Holy Spirit can do in a willing jar of clay, amen? So we throw that stuff off. I had to come to God and say, God, if I don't get over myself, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. We had five neighbors that died when they lived next door to us. And I couldn't believe it. And I thought, well, I feel so, oh, like, are we the common denominator? What's going wrong here? And I thought, no, it's because you got so comfortable in this life that you're not thinking about, you know, living and breathing and witnessing. You're thinking about like my neighbor and hi, how you doing? It's like, no. How many of those five would have gone to hell and said, why didn't you tell me? You can't get apathetic, you can't get anxious, you can't get comfortable. We've got to remember the race set before us and that it doesn't matter what you've got. The Bible tells us again and again, remember these people of the faith, they didn't have much, but they had a yes and their faith was yes and God did the rest, amen? And so what I love about this is really it's saying, get yourself in a position where you can be as emotionally healthy as possible. Because you can't be spiritual and not emotionally healthy. You can't compartmentalize the two. So get your faith up, get as emotionally healthy as you can. And then what do you need to do? What's the ultimate thing? You know, I hate filling my car up with petrol. I don't know what it is, I think it's lazy. And I kind of go as long as I can on empty. Does anyone else do that? I kind of like, surely like Matt will have to use the car at some point, so I'll just kind of keep this going as long as I can. And that's the thing that I always do is I try to go as long as I can on empty. And, and what the apostle is telling us, he's saying, you know, if you wanna run this race, you know, you've gotta have endurance. And to have endurance, you've gotta keep your eyes set on Jesus. You've gotta not run on empty. You've gotta keep your eyes focused. You've gotta keep your cup filled. You can't do the things that God's called you to do on empty. You can't do them anxious. You can't do them needing approval from man. You know, what was the thing that ruined Saul? It was his need for people to recognize him and make something of himself. And that's what I love about Andy. You know, he, he's not making this big deal of these achievements and these honors that he's been given. He's not like, well, where's my blue tick on Twitter? He's just keeping the main thing, the main thing. And he's not running on empty. He's getting God to keep filling up his cup and filling up his cup and filling up his cup. And what we need, what the apostle is saying is we need a fresh revelation of Jesus. All of us in this room, we need a fresh revelation. Matt needs it. Not putting you down. I, I need it. Because we can't go on our testimony. You know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But if we don't cling 
and fix our eyes daily, asking Him, fill my cup. If we try to do anything in our strength, but when the power of God comes and we wait and we receive the things that He's got for us, you find yourself speaking in places you never thought you'd speak knocking on doors you never thought you'd be bold enough to knock, putting your hands up for teams that you thought, I never thought I'd be able to do this because it's not about the gift, it's about the vessel being willing because the power of God is there and it's here and it's wanting to fill you to overflowing because Manchester, you have not seen anything yet. This is Jesus finished the race because He set His face on the Father. He set His face. He endured because of the joy that He could see down the line, the end result, the reward. And I believe that that's what God is wanting to encourage us today. You and I, Matt, and George, and all of us here, the things that we've seen before and the anointing that we've received and the boldness, He wants to give you the new wine. Jesus wants to give you new eyes. We don't need to ask for new vision because when you get more of Jesus, there's the vision. We don't even need to ask for provision because when you see Jesus, there's the vision, there's the provision. He sorts those things out. We just come and we love Him and we adore Him and we focus on the cross and we go back and we go, you endured that, you did what? The key to our breakthrough is never losing the joy of our salvation, never losing the revelation of Jesus, coming to Him, not just with a bold yes, but waiting for His Holy Spirit to fill us. Because there are men and women in here who are called to be evangelists. You are called to serve on teams and you wrote yourself off a long time ago. But in this atmosphere of faith, something is stirring. And God is wanting to remind you. And this book was written for a people who were suffering extreme difficulties. And he's using the example of men and women just like you, who had to endure and overcome. But they could do it because of the blood of Jesus. And David total opposite spirit to Saul. Now he stood there, the youngest, the least qualified in everyone's eyes. And what did he have to go through? Well, he was bullied by his own family. He was told that what he had was not adequate by the professionals. And the enemy in front of him told him not a chance. But I love that because of his eyes of faith and where his eyes were set on his God and his love for his God, and that was his fuel for him to be able to pick up something so seemingly insignificant and slay the enemy in the face of so much opposition and so much difficulty, he overcame and defeated the enemy. And I tell you, there are giants in this land and there are demons in this place, in this city, but God is sending you out like David's, like runners in a race, And He is saying to you, don't become weary in doing good. And He has set for you your life. Do you understand? The Master God has written a plan for your life with people in it that only you can reach and your story and your sorrows and your ability to overcome, you can reach them. And when you say yes to God and you remember with faith, and you boldly say yes, God will use you to slay the giants in the land and turn this city to be a city for God. You have only just started, amen? So don't disqualify yourself, don't take your eyes off Jesus. Keep your eyes set on the prize, which is heaven. Heaven, the the souls that are gonna wait in heaven and say, because of you, because of your yes, because of your boldness, because of your fearlessness. Let's take our weaknesses to the cross. 
We're just wineskins. And we're going to get the new wine today. And I believe we're going to go out of here and see Jesus do incredible things in this city for his glory and his honor and his fame. Amen? Amen. Now, I am so passionate about waiting on God. I'm so passionate. I used to be a real control freak. Don't ask Matt about it. That wouldn't be appropriate. He's got a lot to say about that. So, yes. I used to be a real rescuer and a controller, and I learned something incredible. I learned to just come before God and give God my impossibles and to stand back. And I believe that for many of you, there are things about yourself that you've written off as an impossible that God wants you to bring to the cross of Jesus. And there are other people here today and you've been doing things in your own strength and you're tired. And God says, I want you to come to the cross of Jesus and give it to me. And now watch what it feels like to do it in my strength. And then there are other people that I believe you've been running on empty for a while and you're so good at loving others and reaching others. But today God wants to give you as the greatest gift, His Holy Spirit. So why don't we stand? And I wanna pray, God, God, I thank you for every miracle that we have seen in this city. God, I thank you for the men and women in the faith who toil in the background and serve in the unseen and the leaders of the faith and the heroes in the faith, the feet, the people who wash the feet that no one knows about, that God, you know their name. God, you see their hearts, Jesus. And I thank you that today you've brought these people here for a purpose because you have a plan for their lives to use them as evangelists and as the hands and feet of Jesus. And God, we can't do anything without your power. So we come with faith and expectation, standing in our lane saying, Jesus, would you fill us? Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we believe in you. Jesus, I believe that you can use me. And if one of those categories is you, I wanna invite you to come forward. Let's not leave this place without receiving a touch of God. So if you feel that you're in one of those groups of people and you wanna receive a fresh touch from God, why don't you just start to come forward now? That's fantastic, wonderful. Keep coming, there's more of you. Your yes to God today is the beginning of a miracle for someone else. Do you understand that? What God's gonna fill you up with is for someone else. And thank you, Jesus. That's it, just keep coming. There's more of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's people here, you've been too scared to put your name down and you wrote your life off and Jesus is saying, come down and offer your life as a living sacrifice. And I believe that there's a Moses here. There's somebody who you so love Jesus, but you just don't wanna speak. I believe that this is your day to offer up your life and your mouth and to trust God that He will give you the boldness. And if that's you, would you come forward right now? I wanna pray for you. Amazing, amazing. Is there anyone else that's been running on empty? Doesn't wanna do it in their own strength. Is there anyone here that God has given you the gift of intercession for this city? And God has gripped you with eyes of faith for this city. And I believe if you're here, I'm going to ask you to stretch out your hands on these men and women. On these lives, that's it. We're going to stretch out our hands and we're going to believe for God to fill them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We know that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, God. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, would you fill up these men and women, God? Would you fill up these men and women with your Holy Spirit? And there's so much lost, disillusioned people. And there are thousands with a race to run, Jesus. So I pray you'd fill them with your Holy Spirit and send them out changed. Because of your power, Jesus, because of your cross. And those of you who are here at the front, I want you just to start seeing Jesus. I want you to start seeing Jesus and I want you to start praying out to Him. I want you to start worshipping Him. I want you to start repenting. 
of the times you haven't trusted Him and offer yourselves again as a living sacrifice. That's it. Stop praying to your Maker. Start offering your life up again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Nathan knows the full impact of the hire tour. You see, he struggled at home, he had a tough background, he struggled with his self-confidence and he was getting bullied at school. But one day his local Eden team decided to take him to the hire tour. And when he was there, he responded to this amazing good news of Jesus Christ and it totally changed his life. And now he's thriving, how good is that? Let's see Nathan's story. I suffered a lot with bullying at school and eventually that turned into me hating myself and that was horrible. The days where I got up and I just absolutely hated who I was and how I felt about myself. It caused a lot of issues for me in insecurity and mental health wise um, and that impinging on the relationship I had with my mum at home. We lived here a little while. Uh, we came to Old Trafford to do Eden. Nathan popped round and introduced himself and wanted to help help us move in as well. My friend who also lived with us at the time had introduced Nathan to church. They said come along to church and he did. From attending church I had a Bible that was madly out of date. So I was reading my Bible. I knocked on the Joe, I was like, Joe, what does this mean? And she helped me a lot with understanding. Uh, and then she invited me to the high as well. I remember getting in there and I really enjoyed music. Somebody got on stage and they were talking about their testimony. And I remember just, just in the high tour, I remember um, just the feelings that I got in my stomach of, despite everything being pretty difficult, I want to be free from that and I want to have a relationship with a with a father that I've never even known in my life and I want to know you and so I gave my life to God. From there I think um, we engaged more with Eden. We explored the Bible, uh, common questions about God um, and where I was able to face a lot of the issues that I was going through. As an Eden youth worker, I started supporting Nathan sort of through mentoring him. So we meet every week or every other week. Yeah, a significant moment was um, after the higher tour, after he had said yes to sort of accepting Jesus um, into his life. Yeah, he, he just had this completely different attitude. Um, you can even see it, see it in the way he was looking. I've become involved in my tech team at church. My worship team, being really involved in my church, have just really helped me grow in faith. I think it was that journey between sort of getting to know us and local people that were part of the church. It was just that instant where he uh, was part of something bigger. I remember getting home after a really bad day of bullying and just praying and God was like, it's going to be okay. And I got in school the next day and I had you know, all my bullies there and they literally just apologised to me and they'd never bullied me since. From there I felt the need to say, actually no, other young people don't need to go through this. They deserve to feel accepted. So um, I started RISE, which is my anti-bullying programme, which um, is a really good success. And we just, um, you know, educate young people on the impacts of bullying and aim to tackle that. I just feel like a family. Um, and I think St Brides um, and everything that I've been through with the Eden team, there's moments where everything feels really difficult. Um, but it's from that day at the higher tour that I'm able to look back now and be like, I've made that conscious decision to give my life to God and I'm going to trust in Him. It's not 
every day we live through a pandemic, is it? And life has changed for so many of us. And that is definitely the case here at The Message Trust. But one thing that hasn't changed is our vision to see this life transforming news of Jesus Christ go out to the nations. But we need you to support us and partner with us. Will you stand with us in prayer as we take this fantastic news online? It may be slightly different to how we did it before, but we've got an opportunity to reach so many more people. Maybe you want to join us practically. Maybe you want to sharpen your skills as an evangelist. Why don't you join our advanced movement? Become part of one of our teams, learning how to share the gospel in word, not just deed. But also maybe you could stand with us financially. We need your finances more than ever before so that we can continue this mission to see Jesus' name made famous throughout this nation and this world. Will you help us take the good news of Jesus to the hardest to reach young people and places? Here's how you can get involved. Prayer is central to everything we do. Will you join our army of people praying for Jesus to be made known in our nation and for our work? Do you want to be part of making the gospel known in our families, streets and communities? Then why not get involved in our work? If you're under 25, why not come and spend a year on our Message Academy, growing in your faith and being trained and sent out to reach the least, the last and the lost? You have an amazing opportunity to partner with The Message and help us see lives transformed by the Gospel. Just £25 would help us take the life-transforming news of Jesus to more young people than ever before. Will you stand with us today? Sign up to pray, join or give at message.org.uk forward slash get involved. Here on Message TV, we have all sorts of programmes for you, for your church and for your young people. Why not check out The Walk on Mondays where you can learn to love your neighbours and engage in urban mission. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I really hope you've had a great glimpse of what the higher tour looks like, that you're expectant for what God has in store for your future. Why not join us again next week when we've got more in store for you from the vault.